Anthony Joshua noticed Francis Ngannou keeping that right glove wide into the side of his head and there was a reason for that as we saw against Tyson Fury. Now watch Francis Ngannou's right glove and you'll notice that even from the beginning of the fight he's always got that right glove positioned wide into the side of his head and that's very deliberate. Even offensively when he's launching his own attacks or looking to jab against Tyson Fury he's always got that right glove very wide and the reason being if you look through Tyson Fury's recent history under the Kronk system here you can see against Deontay Wilder. Fury likes to throw a lot of throwaway hooks and essentially that means that he's throwing a fake hook to get the opponent to tilt their body round and ultimately they're thinking the hook's going to be there which in this case distracted Deontay Wilder from the right hand and ultimately that's what followed. It was just there to distract him with that decoy hook initially and Anthony Joshua identified this very early on and he realised it was a part of Francis Ngannou's boxing style in general and not specific to the Tyson Fury game plan so Joshua began foot fainting to see what sort of reaction it would elicit from Ngannou and you can see that as he softly foot faints towards Francis, Ngannou swipes downwards with that right glove. And Joshua has downloaded this information and then as he circles round you can see he keeps that right glove of Ngannou's preoccupied by jabbing towards it twice, once there and then another time in succession. As he's trying to see how Ngannou manoeuvres his guard and how he reacts with that right glove specifically and then afterwards Joshua switches up the attack down downstairs and while jabbing to the body Joshua changes in levels as well and that allows him to get under and away from that counter left hook that Francis Ngannou is trying to land as he makes his exit and not just defensively but offensively too Ngannou's got that right glove up wide into the side of his head you can see him here try and launch offense against AJ but Joshua continues to occupy that right glove of Ngannou he wants Francis's attention to be focused there and then shortly afterwards we see Anthony Joshua introduce more foot fainting as he level changes here with a very soft foot feint towards Ngannou to see what sort of reaction he gets and he doesn't get a massive one so now Joshua introduces a slightly heavier foot feint afterwards and AJ doesn't commit to that left hand you can see it's just a very heavy foot feint into range but Ngannou doesn't bite on it that heavily and Joshua's downloading information and when Joshua makes his attacks to the body you can see him level change as well and that allows him to get underneath that counter left hook that Francis Ngannou attempts to get off but is unable to do so. And this was the difference between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury's respective performances when trying to look to jab to the body of Ngannou. Joshua dipped very low and underneath that counter left hook. And after Francis missed the first one, he tried to follow up with another one in quick succession, but Joshua's exit put distance between himself and Ngannou and didn't allow Francis to get the shot off. And so both entry-wise and exit-wise, AJ was making his entries into the pocket safely and also his exits mitigated risk. And Francis Ngannou maneuvered his guard as a result. You can see it become more central here and closer and it's not out as wide as before. But then even more interestingly, Ngannou then squares up and he actually changes into southpaw from orthodox into southpaw and this is a very big moment in the fight. As now from the opposite stance, Anthony Joshua as the orthodox fighter is just trying to preoccupy that lead hand which is now the right glove of Francis Ngannou constantly and that's why you're seeing in these next few examples that when Anthony Joshua extends that lead hand Francis Ngannou intercepts him to stop him measuring the range engaging the right distance as the jab is a measuring tool used to measure the distance between the two fighters and so Anthony Joshua even though he's being intercepted has a good enough read and he then decides to extend his legs double shoulder width apart and that's very deliberate because by extending his legs double shoulder width apart as opposed to regular shoulder width that allows him to cover twice as much distance and because AJ was so active with that lead hand that's what Francis is focused on and so when that backhand arrives it ultimately grazes the shoulder of Ngannou but it's difficult to see and Anthony Joshua continues to go down this avenue of extending his lead hand and Ngannou keeps intercepting it from the opposite stance Joshua keeps toying with that idea of flirting using that lead hand of his and Francis Ngannou goes to intercept it it and ultimately that preoccupies his attention he's focused on constantly intercepting that lead hand but on this occasion you'll also notice Anthony Joshua step inward slightly and faint with that lead hand as well where he's not committing with it but he's just trying to close the distance ever so slightly and subtly disguise the distance he's trying to cover using his feet and distracting with the lead hand upstairs and when AJ feels that he's in a close enough proximity to then detonate you can see he launches with that lead hand a feint towards Ngannou and then fires 
fires the right hand that Francis doesn't see coming. And ultimately, this drops Francis Ngannou, and it's the first time we've seen him on the floor in either boxing or UFC, and Ngannou's knocked down for the first time. And his legs aren't quite under him fully, and ultimately he does beat the count and gets back to his feet in the end. And then in the next exchange, you'll notice that when Anthony Joshua sits on this right hand towards Francis Ngannou, he dips very low after overextending so that he can get under any potential counter left hook and avoid repeating the Andy Ruiz episode. And afterwards, Francis Ngannou looks to clinch up by ultimately trying to get Anthony Joshua into a collar tie that he tries single-handed in the end with his right glove, but Joshua denies him the position by controlling the shoulder initially and then securing a right overhook over that left arm of Ngannou while simultaneously controlling the waist of Francis using his left glove and ultimately that requires refereeing intervention to split the two up. And ultimately that then concludes the first round of this fight. The second round begins and Francis Ngannou begins biting on the feints of Anthony Joshua a lot more heavy and you can see here Joshua foot feints and Ngannou loads up with a big left hook that misses Joshua by quite some distance and he begins biting on the feints of AJ significantly more. And Joshua is not fully extending on these shots, he's just probing with that lead hand upstairs initially and then downstairs as though he's about to touch the body and Francis is putting oceans of distance between himself and Anthony when these attacks look to be happening. But they transpired to be feints and even when Ngannou then looks to launch his own offence, he's doing it from out of range and he can't quite get the contact that he needs. And after that knockdown in the previous round, Anthony Joshua has gained a lot more respect from Ngannou in terms of punch power. You can see Joshua not fully extend on that lead hand by any stretch of the imagination. Although Francis bites heavily on that lead hand probing and puts distance between them and then Joshua, you can see here, begins marrying his shots together. He throws a left hand upstairs and then follows up with the right cross. But the key thing to notice here is Anthony Joshua's head movement off the centre line and you'll see as I replay here that AJ moves his head off the centre line when he jabs whereas previously he was keeping it on the line in his last three fights and then afterwards when throwing his right hand he takes his head off the line once again. And this was previously one of Joshua's biggest weaknesses in the fights last year against Jermaine Franklin and Robert Hellenius and you can see in this example that Joshua slips his head off the centre line and slips on the outside of that left hand of Ngannou giving him a clearer view of the target so he can then launch that right hand to counter him. Subsequently, Anthony Joshua then lands a right hand that rocks Francis Ngannou, but afterwards Ngannou, by default, then looks to wrap him up after. Although Anthony Joshua secures an overhook using his left arm on Ngannou's right arm, and ultimately the referee then has to intervene and separate them from the grappling in the clinch. And this was one of the grey areas going into the fight, and you'll see here that Ngannou launches his offence here with a wide lead hook that Joshua gets under, and afterwards, when they find themselves wrapping each other up, you can see that this time round, Francis Ngannou has an overhook with his left arm on Anthony Joshua, but Joshua's bicep is also being controlled. And Ngannou's controlling that left bicep of Anthony Joshua to prevent him from clinching, and the referee doesn't let them out grapple out of the exchange and then intervenes afterwards. Joshua then begins increasing the intensity of his attacks. You can see here that he jabs towards the head of Francis Ngannou and then looks to double up that jab, although this time round, Anthony looks to go a little bit lower down and target the chest area of Ngannou and he falls just short on this occasion. And then Francis Ngannou launches out a jab but he flicks his wrist out in doing so and it's non-committal and Joshua gets on the outside of it just enough to leave Francis Ngannou at the full extension of his punch and then counter him with a right hand and this really rocks Francis Ngannou and then afterwards Joshua follows up them with a left hook and ultimately that second shot then guides Francis Ngannou down to the canvas and that's the second knockdown of the fight scored by Anthony Joshua and Joshua walks to the neutral corner while Francis Ngannou reclimbs back to his feet and he beats the count of 10 but he's not quite got his feet under him and then Joshua advances and immediately he faints with that left arm of his as though he's going to touch the body but he doesn't and instead he comes over the top with a right hand and that sends Francis Ngannou backwards losing all of his footing behind him and ultimately he's left starfished on the canvas you can see his knee bend fully there 
and he's out for the count and the referee waves it off immediately. And Anthony Joshua becomes the first man in boxing and UFC history to ever knock out Francis Ngannou, an achievement which Alistair Overeem, Stipe Miocic, etc. were unable to do and he becomes the first man in history to do so. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.